Wrestling It! Here we are, Luca Real Dream Galdi here, Francesco Hunter Cacciatore. Francesco, can you Hello. hear me? Hello. And with us today, there is the, the one, the only, the virtuosa Diona Purrasso. Ciao, Diona. Hi, guys. How are you? We're great. Not too bad. Tutto bene, tutto bene. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation of doing this interview. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of questions to ask you because, I mean, we follow you. We, we know that you have an Italian heritage. Uh, but Francesco, let's start. Let's start with the first question. All right. So um, I want to start from the beginning, actually, because something that's always interested me is how uh, you guys who do this uh, amazing job that we all love. How is it that you get interested in it. So was it something that you always liked? Or I don't know, do you remember a moment when you said, okay, th this is what I want to do? Was there one match, one uh, performer that impressed you? How did it start? Um, so I have a twin brother, his name's Dominic. And he was a huge wrestling fan when we were younger growing up. And uh -huh. um, it was, I think I was nine. The first time I saw wrestling and really got interested in it, Stone Cold Steve Austin hit Chris Jericho, I believe it was, over the head with a chair. And from, from that moment, I was just kind of hooked. Um, and I never looked back uh, as a wrestling fan. And then um, when I got to see the women wrestle, and um, I really became interested in wrestling as a career. And that was something that I thought I could do. So um, at nine, I told my parents uh, that one day I wanted to be a professional wrestler. Wow. wow. Amazing. <laughs> so, it's, always, so, it's always a Stone Cold Steve Austin's fault. See? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's always Austin's always. fault. So your parents can blame him because of this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but that's actually a good point because uh, you're not the first one who tells us that Stone Cold was one of the because he was an icon I mean, back then and wrestling was so over like was so mainstream. But uh, speaking of uh, female wrestlers, you 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 said that you actually decided when you saw women wrestling. What were your like um, early idols? Your main influences to get to the business? Yeah, um, my number one favorite was always Trish Stratus um, uh -huh. and I mean she was just, I watched Raw last night because Trish Stratus was on Raw um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but her and Lita um, Victoria Mickey James um, all of those women were just kind of the reason why I wanted to become a professional wrestler they weren't just like beautiful and running around in bras and panties they were wrestlers to me so uh, they made me really want to pursue professional wrestling That's right. And um, when did you actually start training and uh, where were your trainers? Uh, so I started training um, at 18 in New Jersey um, with Damian Adams at a, a school called D2W. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of transformed over into Team Adams, um, which is Damian and a few other girls like Karen Q and Tasha Steeles that I've trained with consistently, but uh, my number one trainer since day one has been Damien Adams. But you, uh, I've read somewhere that you trained with Rip Rogers too at some point. Yeah, so Rip Rogers was actually Damien's trainer back when he was in OVW. Um, okay. And I've gone down to, to Louisville and trained with Rip quite a few times. Um, we brought him to New Jersey to do seminars. I've been to Canada with Rip. Um, for seminars, so I've just kind of, anytime he's been in the area that I could get to, I've went to train with him. Mm -hmm. And um, so you mentioned the New Jersey right now, so you're a native of New Jersey? Yes. Right, and I know there is a huge Italian community there, right? Yes. Uh -huh. oh, what, and, what about the Italian heritage that you have? So where are you from? Where, are, where were your parents or grandparents from? Yeah, so my grandparents um, are actually Sicilian, and uh, okay. they're from the village of Chidami, I believe. Um, and funny story is actually um, both sides of my grandparents and, and my family are from the same village there. So um, 
it's always been like a joke in my family. But so we're Sicilian. Oh, and the, um, the, 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 that's nice. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been. So you should go. I'm going to Sicily next week. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going on holiday in uh, Trapani, uh, Palermo and Trapani, so the, okay. the, the north part, and on an island called Favignana, which is very nice, very nice sea. So you should go there. Yeah, Definitely. that's like my dream vacation is to go. So hope, hopefully soon. Have you ever thought of, you know, exploring uh, your roots? I mean, uh, uh researching something or uh, incorporating them in your character in some way yeah i um my family has done like a lot of research to go back and see like where our families come from so um like my mom has like all that history um but i think like mo i guess we just get grouped like sicilians and italians is the same kind of so especially in the states So um, WWE was really the ones who pushed me to incorporate Italian heritage into my into my character when I first started wrestling. So I, I wore the Italian colors and, um, you know, transformed a Ferrari symbol into my own. But, yep. um, you know, so ne that was when I had first started. And I think characters always evolve and it's just kind of become a part of who I am, not necessarily my character. Mm -hmm. So it was really WWE who, who kind of pushed me to explore that a little bit more. All right, all right. That's the same thing that uh, Mike Mike Werner told us basically that they yeah. encouraged him to, um, ex I mean, to do something with his uh, uh, Italian background. Uh, but uh, back to wrestling. Uh, when was your uh, first match? Ooh, um, my first match was December sixth of two thousand and thirteen. Well, yeah, you have very good memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. I worked for that my whole life to be able to have that one match. And I always said um, to the people that I train with and to my trainer daily and Matt, if I never had another match from that day forward, like I lived that dream that I wanted. So that specific day was one of the most important of my life. Well, that's very, very nice. Do you remember uh, something about the match? Uh, was your opponent? How was it? Um, my opponent was a woman named Jana who had been like just uh just like a veteran wrestler in New Jersey for 10 years or something like that um and my parents came like my mom was there to see my first match and I had a few friends there but I remember um a week or two prior to the match Jana had uh, dislocated my jaw in practice <laughs> and I was terrified to wrestle uh because it was on purpose And I was so scared that, like, this was my first match. I had no idea what I was doing. And she was just going to go out there and try to hurt me. But uh, we got through it, and I lived to wrestle another day. So <laughs> it ended up being okay. <laughs> wow. But um, is any of your parents, apart from your brother, of course, uh, a wrestling fan? Mother, your father, your grandfather? N not that I could say with confidence um my dad's only seen me wrestle wrestle like a handful of times um the first time last year uh, at ring of honor in new york city and um he came to the hammerstein ballroom and mm. wow. um, cody rhodes was in the ring and you know i know cody and he was so shocked that like you're friends with dusty Rhodes' son you didn't tell me that <laughs> and i was like Rhodes was. <laughs> so that was like it took you know 23 and a half years for me to like have a conversation about wrestling with my dad because he wasn't a big fan growing up but I guess he did watch like you know in the early Bro, 80s with my maybe. grandfather I don't know we've never talked about it so that was like a really cool moment to have with him uh that he like knew part of something that I loved for the first time you know but that's hey, because that's In the, in the Italian community uh, in the 60s and 70s, br thanks to Bruno San Martino, there were many It Italian Americans uh, fans. So maybe yeah. your grandfather as well. We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I think that, I mean, the, the difference, like with people like, you know, uh, we said Stone Cold and of course uh, Basti, and they were, I mean, 
larger than just wrestling. Like people outside of wrestling fans knew them. So yeah. that that's a huge thing from the past. I think that uh, needs to come back in wrestling today. Uh, so um, we were talking about your training and um, uh, what styles uh, actually influenced you most in uh, developing your own style? Because um, because we know you have, you are a master of the Fujiwara armbar, so I think that Japanese wrestling is a huge influence. And uh, you can tell us something about that. Yeah. So so really, which is funny that you mentioned Japanese wrestling style because I was not a Japanese wrestling fan until right before I went to Japan for the first time. Uh, my mm-hmm. training is very old school American style wrestling. Um, very very influenced by like Rip Rogers, who yeah. is like the master of old school. So to be able to transition from you know basic American style wrestling to a Ring of Honor style wrestling, which is a bit of a hybrid between American and Japanese and and and, and lucha and stuff like that, and then to go to Japan and wrestle. Um, my style now has been more broadened and more uh, well-rounded, I, I would like to say. Um, but really, I just love technical wrestling. I love mat wrestling. People like Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit are my favorite wrestlers. Um, so I've tried to adapt more of like that, that like yeah. cruiserweight WCW kind of style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Um uh, so moving on, wh- wh- when was your first uh, approach to WWE? Um, so the first time that I worked for WWE was as a Rosebud with Adam Rose. Back, mm-hmm. uh, I guess it was 2014, was the very first time that I got to be an extra at Monday Night Raw. Um, and then from there, just consistently, whenever they were in the Northeast, I got to go and be a Rosebud when Adam was still there, I got to do tryouts before SmackDown and stuff. So um, really 2014 was the first time that I got to work. How was the impact going into the WWE universe? Yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. very, very Michael Cole. I, I, I felt like Michael Cole now. <laughs> <laughs> the WWE it, universe. Yeah, no, it's cool because that's what I dreamt about. I, when I first became a wrestling fan like I didn't know what independent wrestling was and I didn't know what ring of honor or impact wrestling was I I wanted to be a WWE superstar so to walk into Monday Night Raw and see my favorite wrestlers like growing up one of them is Randy Orton like to be in the same environment as him and just kind of realize like oh wow these people aren't just people I idolize these are now my peers and my co-workers was just a, a really amazing satisfying feeling Mm-hmm. Right, of course. And um, you, but you, speaking, sorry, oh, Francesco. Sorry, Luca. Um, sorry, Luca go on. Um, did you did you ever met um, Stone Cold Steve Austin at the end of the day? So no. You're, you're, oh no! Wow. <laughs> well, so for the second May Young Classic last, last year, um, we had to sketch Stone Cold Steve Austin with a blindfold on. Um, so <laughs> I drew just like a little stick figure that said, hell yeah. And I tweeted it <laughs> at Stone Cold. Um, and he tweeted back. So that's our only interaction. But I can move that for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th- think th- you that's will do it. I think you will do it. <laughs> I hope so. But um, speaking of the WWE, uh, there's something uh, I wanted to ask you. Because, um, you know, in the last few years, uh, there is, there's been a lot of talk about the women's revolution, and it's always been about the WWE. But actually, it was not just the WWE. I mean, you were in the first Women of Honor tournament, right? The Ring of Honor. So you were actually one of those uh, wrestlers who made the women's revolution, but outside of the WWE. Yeah. Um, I feel like for me, changing the perception of women's wrestling was always my goal. Um, I've never been for like money and fame and, and all that stuff comes with being a WWE superstar, but I just always wanted women to be seen as, as powerful forces in pro wrestling, no matter where it was. Um, so women of honor was like a passion project for me and something that I poured my whole soul into because WWE had 
had rejected me so many times that I was at a point of like, no, F these people, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to be better anywhere else that I could be. And I kind of used that rejection as, as motivation um, to make Women of Honor what I saw that it could be, which was competition for WWE. Um, and it was the same motivation that I used to be able to wrestle in Japan and wrestle in England and wrestle in Australia and all these other places that I just wanted women to be seen in, in such a greater light than I saw women growing up. Um, so, so Women of Honor was so special to me because we got that, that opportunity to like create something for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you were actually, I mean, one of the, as I said, one of the people who made the women revolution, but uh, somehow, I mean, what happened outside of the WWE was kind of uh, overshadowed by the WWE jumping on, you know, this women revolution, making a pay-per-view and uh, uh, making it kind of all about them. But as you said, there was a lot going on outside, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and if we think about it too, like Impact had been doing all women's pay-per-views for for years, and I got to be a part of two of those um, with Knockouts mm -hmm. Knockdown, and they had you know Gail Kim versus uh, Taryn Terrell in like a Last Woman Standing match, I believe it was, or something like that. Like mm -hmm. women all over the world and in all these companies had the same vision that WWE has now, and WWE has such a great platform worldwide that it's been pushed to newer heights because of the platform that they have and and i think that it's trickled down to other places now being given the same platform so it's kind of all evened out in the long run uh yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, speaking of um women in wrestling uh, recently, you have been uh, uh, very outspoken in your criti criticism of uh, fans chanting uh, the name of your boyfriend, uh, Marty Scarl, during your matches. And then uh, I think uh, Renee Young also added her voice to this. And of course, I, I agree with you. That's, that's an awful thing to do. But do you think uh, it's just, uh, just that? Or you think that also tells us that maybe uh, female uh, wrestlers are, are still seen as uh, secondary competitors in the wrestling scene the, by the wrestling audiences. Do you think that this is part of a bigger problem still? I think it's it's always going to be part of a bigger problem because there's such um, a demographic in the world that want to hold women back, want to hold specific people back. Like you can't appease everyone. And wrestling is so subjective because it's predetermined that people can form their own opinion. It's not it's not real. Um, just like, like who your favorite wrestler is might not be mine, and there's no statistics to prove that. People don't see women in wrestling as equals, and those are the people that were never going to change their mind. If they don't believe it now, they ne might never will. But it's my job to go out there and perform to the best of my ability and to support myself as a woman, but my fellow women too. So I got a lot of backlash for being outspoken about people chanting whoop whoop and, and uh, things that mean pertaining to Marty, but um, I'm always going to defend myself. I'm always going to defend women in wrestling because we're in a spot where we can right now. And uh, we're in a spot where we deserve to be treated as better than. You are the coolest thing in wrestling. Last year, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey. This year, what Tessa Blanchard is doing in TNA is in Impact. Sorry, it's yeah. it's amazing. It's great. She's gonna she's she's breaking all the walls. Great job, great job. That's true. Yeah. So so we just as women have to collectively always stand up for each other and always defend ourselves and defend one another because there's always going to be that portion of the population that doesn't want to see it succeed, but that portion today was like the majority 10 years ago. So if we can continue to push forward and work hard and support women, um, they'll get there too. It's just yeah. going to take a little bit more yeah. time. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you have worked really hard for this. I mean, uh, 2017 Ring of Honor Women Wrestler of the Year, then summer of 2018 uh, May Young Classic, and then an NXT contract. You want to tell us a, a little about how this came about? Yeah, um, 
I had signed a contract for Ring of Honor in, in January of 2018. And it was meant to be uh, a year-long contract. But um, just some things with my personal life and the way uh, my career was going at Ring of Honor wasn't ideal for me anymore. And I had asked to be released. And they granted me that release. And just a f- few weeks later... Um, WWE had contacted me about the potential of signing a contract and being a part of the Mae Young. So it all kind of fell together in this weird way um, to work out for the best of all of us. Okay. And uh, you happy living in Florida now? Is that a big change for you? Yeah, it's a bit, it was a really big change for my personal life because I had lived at home with my dad. And, um, you know, now he lives in New York and... I had never lived on my own. I never paid rent or paid bills or any of these things. So um, moving to Florida and kind of starting my own life, my own family here uh, was a really big change for me last year. But I love it here. I love being in Florida, being at the Performance Center. Um, Karen Q has joined me and Rachel Evers and Chelsea Green and, and three of my best friends from indie wrestling that I spent all my time with. Now I spend every day with and I work with on a consistent basis. So um, it's been a really great year of just a lot of personal change, but also a lot of success for, for my friends and my family in wrestling. That's, uh, that's amazing. And um, yeah, uh, speaking of your personal life, I've read somewhere on the internet that you actually, uh, uh, you're, um, uh, you like history. Is that right? Yes, I love history. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's that's, that's cool. I, I'm an historian, actually. But that's very that's very funny oh, wow. to, to know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I'm not when I'm not doing this, I actually, I'm actually an historian. And you're studying to become a teacher too. Is that is that true? Um. So I was a teacher before I moved down to uh, Florida. Um, okay. I taught preschool from uh, so like two and a half to four ages, two to four, and. Um, yeah, I had stopped teaching right before I moved down to Florida. Oh, okay. Because you're, not, you're too busy now, I guess, right? Yeah, wrestling just kind of took over, and I was, um, you know, traveling so much and spending so much time away from home and from work that it wasn't fair to the kids. Being a teacher means consistency and, um, you know, discipline and, and all of those things that kids need to thrive. And I wasn't able to support that anymore for them. So it was best for me to walk away and, and allow them a te- teacher that could provide what they needed. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, very, very responsible. Um, so what's, uh, what's in the future? I mean, what are your plans moving forward? What are the things you want to accomplish now that you're in NXT with the message that you want to give to our listeners? Um, I think for me personally, I want to bring back the days of, of Sasha and Becky and, and Charlotte and, and Bailey in NXT, that competitive wrestling fire that kind of ignited, ignited this whole women's evolution. I want to be able to debut on TV when it's my time and just kind of, uh, show them what wrestling is about again and luckily i have um been paired with with chelsea green and rachel evers in nxt and we kind of have a tag team thing going on called vxt um so Mm -hmm. i'm really excited to explore where that goes and and see uh, where that's headed but everyone wants to be the nxt women's champion everyone wants to go on to be the raw or smackdown women's champion so i hope those things are in my future too so what's your dream match if you have to choose a dream match, even from people from the past, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, if I had to pick someone that's still currently wrestling, I think that I would pick uh Natalia, mm-hmm. and then if I could pick like a Hall of Famer, of course, I would pick Trish Stratus. <laughs> and if you will do an intergender match, you would pick Stone Cold Steve Austin, I think. Oh, mm, <laughs> I don't know, Dean Malenko yeah. could wrestle again. Like, if he came out of retirement, it would be Dean. But, but yes, I would love to wrestle Stone Cold to Boston. The, the man of a thousand holes. Yes. Uh, okay, so you must be very excited for uh, SummerSlam, of course. We're seeing uh, uh, Trish wrestle Charlotte, right? Yes, I'm so excited. Right. So, a very last question. Uh, tell us your, uh, the, your top three favorite matches of wrestling history. 
but uh, uh, male, was... female, not C. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go in no specific order. I'm just going to list them off. WrestleMania 10, Owen versus Brett. Oh. Yep. Um, Fall Brawl. Chris Jericho versus Eddie Guerrero. I b- believe it was 1997. 1997, yeah. And then I'm going to pick a classic Trish match, Trish versus Mickey. I think it was WrestleMania 23. When, yeah. yeah. Classic. <laughs> I mean, I, I was not expecting a full brawl 97. I mean, <laughs> you're, really, you're really really, knowledgeable for being uh, so young, actually. <laughs> yeah, that honestly, that is, you know, the style that I love most. And that match... Um, just has great psychology. It has great athleticism. It's just a combination of everything that I think uh, speaks to Jericho and Eddie and, and to know that they were such good friends. And a lot of that was called on the fly is just amazing to me. And it's one of my favorite technical matches ever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, me, me and Luca and love to watch all the WCW pay-per-views when yeah. we can. So we totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Luca, do you want to ask very any... nice pay-per-view. Yeah, no, no, that's great. That's great. Thank you very much, Dionna. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but when you are on television in Italy, the Italian community, the Italian wrestling community, it's very excited because as soon as we see an Italian flag, we get excited. So we support <laughs> you. And I mean, also the thing that your name is The Virtuosa, which is an Italian word. Uh, yeah. Makes us very proud. Oh, That's well, absolutely. You, you should so know much. that. You should know that. Yeah, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and oh, say no. so to your family as well, because I mean, <laughs> they, they must move, be proud too. Yeah, they must be proud as well. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so thank you very thank much, you so much. Donna. Grazie mille. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much, much. and all the can best say, for the future. Can you say something in Italian? Just say hello. To, to oh our... God! Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Say some curse words, but I don't think that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, 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 just ciao, just ciao, ciao, ciao. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. ciao, Deonna. Ciao.